Hello everyone, today I'm going over the Stealth Vision Bundle, which includes the Night Vision component, the Thermal Vision component, and the X-Ray Vision component. Previously, this bundle included these Stealth Visions as three separate components, requiring you to set them up individually, which created some conflicts in the post-processing that made it difficult to get multiple Stealth Visions up and running on a character. So now they've been consolidated into a single component to make setup easier and faster and to make switching between them super simple. As you can see, everything is initialized on a single function and toggling between them is as simple as setting the desired stealth vision on this toggle vision function. To show you how easy it is to get everything set up, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this and show you how to do it from scratch. Before we do anything else, if you're planning on using the X-ray vision, you need to change a project setting. To do that, we're gonna go up here to edit project settings, and we're gonna search up here for stencil. You need to make sure that this custom depth stencil pass is set to enabled with stencil. Otherwise, the X-ray vision isn't going to work. So this is an essential step in getting that set up. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is add the Stealth Vision component to your character. To do that, you're just going to press this Add button here and search for Stealth. You can see it pops up right there. And now it's been added to your character. I need to initialize this on Begin Play, so I'm going to drag a reference into my blueprint here. And now I'm going to search for Begin Play. And off of the Stealth Vision component, I'm going to drag and search for Initialize. We want Initialize Stealth Vision. I'm going to hook it up to Begin Play. I also need to hook up my player camera, so I'm going to get a reference to that as well and plug that in. By default, the Stealth Visions are disabled with this dropdown being set to None. But if you'd like to start your game with one of the Stealth Visions enabled, you can just select this dropdown and pick from them here. There are three Stealth Visions included in this project, so I'm going to grab three inputs. I'm just going to use the number keys to make this easy. I'm going to grab a, another reference to our Stealth Vision component here and just search for Toggle. You can see this Toggle Vision pops up, we want that one. And I'm going to plug that into our first input here. We're also going to need to hook up our player camera again. And I'm going to set this first input to Night Vision. To get our next two, I'm just going to copy paste all of these nodes. and hook them up to our inputs. The second one I'm gonna set to thermal vision and the third one I'm gonna set to x-ray vision. And now we can easily toggle between the three. To toggle any of the stealth visions off again, I'm just gonna get a fourth input here and I'll copy paste this function again and get that all hooked up. And I'm gonna set the vision drop down to none. And now you can easily toggle it off again. So now that this is all set up, our night vision should be working fine and even some of the post-process changes to the thermal vision and the x-ray vision should be working. But you'll notice with the thermal vision and the x-ray vision that these three characters are not being registered as a heat signature or as a highlighted object. So I'm going to show you how to get that set up next. To do this, you want to select the character or object in your scene that you want to receive a heat signature or a highlight and search in their details panel for depth. You want to make sure this render custom depth pass is set to true. I'm going to go ahead and do that for all three of these guys. And now when I press play, you can see they are receiving a heat signature as well. But they're not receiving a highlight quite yet. 
To receive a highlight as well, this custom depth stencil value has to be set to a number between 1 and 5. Each number represents a different highlight color that corresponds to certain information that may be useful to the player. One corresponding to enemies, two for targets, three for allies, four for information, and five for player. I want to set these characters as enemies, so I'm going to change their stencil value to one. And now you can see they're receiving a highlight as well. Going back to the example character and clicking on the Stealth Visions component, we can see we have a list of settings here on the side. The default settings are essentially used to clear any changes to post-process values made by the Stealth Visions. Under our Thermal Vision settings, we have our Thermal Vision materials, this top one being the most important as it controls the color of the Thermal Vision. We also have settings for the noise intensity and noise size. Similarly, under X-ray vision settings, we have an option to change the material, again the top one being the most important. We can also change the material for the night vision and adjust its exposure compensation and noise intensity and size as well. You can easily change the color and overall look of each of these by selecting from the many preset materials included in the project, or by creating your own variation. I'll link previous videos in the description for a more in-depth look at how to create your own instances of the included materials. In the X-ray Vision component tutorial, I showed you how to get a smoother transition between toggling the X-ray Vision on and off. As it is right now, it feels a little abrupt, and I think we can smooth this out a little more and just get it feeling a little nicer. Getting this set up will be largely the same as how we set it up in the X-ray Vision tutorial, but there's one additional step that varies slightly, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. I'm going to use the F key as my input to toggle this. And the first thing you're going to need is a timeline. There's a timeline included in the example character that I've just copied over here. And you can do the same, it should carry these outputs with it as well. If it doesn't, or you just want to understand more about how this works, you can check out my previous tutorial and it'll walk you through step by step on how to set up your own timeline. But for now, I'm just going to nudge this over a little bit and I'm going to hook up my press to the play. Off of released, I'm going to grab a delay. This delay will automatically turn off the x-ray vision after a set duration. So I'm going to set this to 2 seconds. And instead of plugging this in directly to the reverse, I'm going to grab a branch. I'm going to hook the true of the branch into the reverse. Because we've set this up to toggle between the three stealth visions at any time, I'm going to use this branch to check to see if we're still using x-ray vision by the time this delay is done. So I'm going to grab another reference to our stealth vision component. And off of this, I'm going to search for stealth visions. We want get stealth visions down here. Off of this, I'm going to search for an equals enum. And I'm going to set this to x-ray vision. And I just have to plug this into my branch. Next, I'm going to grab another reference to our stealth vision component here and find our toggle vision again. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the player camera again. And I'm going to hook this up to the update of our timeline here. And make sure this is set to x-ray vision. Now you can see there are some matching outputs and inputs from our timeline to our toggle vision component. I'm going to go ahead and hook each of these up. So what this is doing is when we press our input, it is smoothly transitioning to our x-ray vision. And then after a set duration, it will check to see if we're still using x-ray vision, and then we'll smoothly disable it. And you can see that working in the viewport here. 
That's all for the Stealth Vision component. Please let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them in the comments below. Next I'll be going over how to set this up with the Advanced Locomotion System, so if you're interested in that, please subscribe so you don't miss that video. And I'll catch you in the next one.